Hey, what's up everyone? Today we have a Troy built zero turn that barely fits in the garage. That's mainly because it's the end of the summer and anyone who owns a small garage and works out of it knows that uh, you collect a lot of crap. Sometimes that crap gets in the way. So we need to clean that out. But in the meantime, we have just enough space to work. Basically, this is running, no problem. The owner wanted me to do a couple things. One, level the deck. That was an adjustment. Really hard to film, and your manual is probably the better one to show that one. Next was to tune up the engine. And then finally, the third one was just give a quick little look over uh, to make sure nothing was wrong. I did that. A um, couple things uh, I did was I sprayed the battery terminals with protectant. Um, the handles have a couple hinges that were pretty squeaky and nasty and dirty, so I cleaned them and put a little lithium grease on them and cleaned underneath the deck. All that, like I said, not going to film too much. And in addition to that, um, I would include that being part of sharpening the blades. I do have a video on sharpening riding mower blades. This is basically the exact same thing, so I'm not going to show that one. But just watch that video and just replace riding mower with zero turn. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on this engine. So everyone has their own version of what tune-up means. But tune-up I'm going to do is this. filters oil plug. Now, the reason why that is, is the hours are fairly minimal. And before me, the owner did about three months ago have a full valve adjustment and on the according to his seat also a fuel pump replacement. I would consider that to be a tune-up part as well, because these pumps do go out. So that being new, supposedly, I, mean, I guess it does kind of look new compared to everything else. That is missing the anchor right there. Hmm. See, that's odd. I don't think this is the right filter for that. It's pretty old. I believe this is the right filter. And I would be wrong. Oh no, I was right. It just fits in there very snugly. You know what though? What I want to do is I want to fix this problem. I'm gonna find a nut or something and kind of put in there and see what we can do about that. Yeah. So, apparently I was wrong. That is the correct filter. So, i am got one on order. We're gonna put that back for now. <coughs> there we go. Um, in the meantime, I took a nut, got it warm, put it in, took it out, cooled it off, cleaned everything around, and put a little adhesive on it. So now that should be good to go. And of course you'd wanna find the correct one to have the th you know, thread size and all that. Don't wanna just have like a random one in there. Hmm. 
Okay, there's that side. And if I could find the other one, that would be spectacular. Never seems to fail as soon as I turn it off. When you do that, make sure it's not a round one. You want to have like a square or octagon or something. There we go. Okay. Next is oil. Um, some of these have a, like a drain tube to kind of assist with all that. I do not think we are going to be that lucky, however. I do not see one. I mean, there's usually almost always a drain port, but whether or not it's accompanied by a easy to use tube, it's completely... Different. Okay, we're going to, have to do it the hard way. Now, don't get me wrong, Troy builds are great, but things that are usually indicative of a higher quality engine, like the ability to easily change the oil, sometimes they kind of fault on. Or, I shouldn't say fall down, they kind of lag on. Yeah, I mean, come on. whole lot of that to go. This next part's really annoying. Let me explain why. Underneath that towel is a hole and beneath that hole is a belt. Now if oil gets on that belt it's really hard to clean it and it's going to slip and get dirty and potentially damage it. Now you could say why don't you just tip it forward well underneath the engine where you can't see there is yet another hole with yet this same belt exposed underneath it so if you tip it forward it's going to drip on the back if you tip it back it, well if you lean it back like it is now it's going to drip in the front at least the f the front of it is a much less um it's a lot easier to clean up, which is put that way on the belt, because there's actually a little shield, not a very good one, but I also put a little paper on it and a piece of bubble wrap or something to protect it. So we're going to get the filter changed. The oil filter. I have a new filter prepped right here and I have it filled about halfway with oil. Oh, I probably could have done that with my hand. to say you're going to want to do this as quickly as possible. Yes, take a little bit of oil. I didn't do that. Run around the ring. And the gasket is on the old filter. It's very important to check that. Double gasketing it will give you a surefire way of spewing oil everywhere. Okay, 
I'm gonna spend a little time cleaning that up, get it done. So this is a 724 cc engine, um, 24 horse, twin cylinder, so it's gonna take a little bit of oil. I, because the filter, I think I got out roughly a quart and a half. When looking up on the internet, for whatever reason, granted it was a quick search, I didn't exactly dive in too deep, was either saying it is a 48 or 60 ounces. Uh, so 48 is, let's see, 30, is it 32 or 36 ounces to a quart? Either way, it's about 12, okay. Now, the oil that you use is technically for this said to be 10W30. You live in a colder climate though, you can potentially go down to like 5W30, that's not going to be a problem. But then you also have to think to yourself when you're going to be using it. Are you going to be using this in a dead of winter? I doubt it. I mean, you could. I don't know why, but you could. So I like to stick with 10W30 for equipment such as this. But if your equipment is going to be used during the winter time, don't think that 10W40 is your end all. You can go a little bit lower, make it a little easier on the engine. So after you're letting it settle for a little bit, probably would help if I let it settle even longer than that. We're going to check it. We are at a little bit low. Let's see if you can see that again. Where is it? There we go. Yeah, it's not even at the low mark. So we are going to need, it probably is closer to that 60 ounces that they were talking about and the excess, excess ounces that I did not pull out. Could be just a little on the bottom of the engine and it could be the fact that a lot of it also spilled out when I was changing the oil filter too. I had put about 70 ounces of oil on this container. I usually keep two empty oil jugs around, one five quart, one one quart for smaller engines such as yeah, like 190, 212s, stuff like that. When you change the oil, you really have to go above like 18 ounces, rarely. 500 milliliters, usually pretty standard. And look what we have there. We are a little bit high, but the filter does have to fill. Yeah, we are at the very, very max. Okay. So I'm going to let it run. We'll do that again. Let it run for about 20 minutes. Eh, nah, less than that. It's like 15. It's thoroughly warm now. And we have directly in the center of the two marks. So we are perfect. That's why I like filling the oil filter up a little bit because it's a little easier to get the correct amount. If you don't, it's not going to hurt anything but um, you will have to put a little bit more knowing that the filter is going to absorb some. So that's why I like to fill it halfway because by the time, if you get your filter filled up halfway, roughly, then by the time the actual filter material, the pleating or whatever it is inside, uh, starts to absorb, you pretty much don't have much to spill out. Maybe a little bit. 
So all that you poured in there instantly just gets absorbed. So I'm just gonna apologize now. That oil, excuse me, that fuel filter that you are seeing right there is gonna be replaced with that one. But considering where the seat is and where I have to put you, I would have to put you someplace where all you're gonna be seeing is my elbow and as nice of elbows I'm sure I have. I don't think it needs to be all you see right now. So I'm just going to take the fuel clips off, put, change the filter. I will put a small uh, vice grip on the end of the fuel line to prevent as much spilling as possible and then put the new one on and call it good. And there you have it. So fuel filter is on. Now don't be too concerned if when you first um, put it on it's not filling up with fuel immediately. That's not 100% uncommon. These are not gravity filters. These filters are meant for a fuel pump. So right now the fuel pump is not running because the engine's not running. In addition to that, these style of fuel pumps are meant to pull fuel. So in order for it to do that, it has to have a place to put it. And when you have to have a place to put it, the only place that you really want it to go is in the carb. Well, right now the needle's up. It's a full carb. So it's going to be kind of running all the time, but uh, it will have no place to put it. So it's not going to immediately fill up. Now, knowing that, I do see a little, little bit. I don't really see anything leaking. So that's good. We are good to go. Another thing, we're going to go over three important things right now. Contrary to some people's popular belief, fuel filters are indeed directional. They're kind of like performance tires. Here's a dirty one to kind of show you better. See that arrow? Follow that arrow. Fuel goes that way. It's almost always that way, but just in case you were ever confused, the open end of the filter will be um, the place where the fuel is going to come in and the paper filter is where it's going to be sucked through. Last and very important thing, when you take off that fuel filter, you will be um, kind of letting a little bit of fuel go by. Now, like I said, I put a clamp on there. Notice what this is? That is what we call in the automotive or mechanics world a battery. Now, batteries will spark if the conditions are right. That's a negative side. You would really have to do some crazy nonsense in order for that side to spark. However, if your battery is the wire differently or the positive is right there and you have a pair of metal clamps chilling on your fuel line keeping the fuel from going through even though it did spill a little remember did spill you could potentially cause a spark and that spark would will have nothing more to do except for finding that a little bit of fuel and then you have a fire more likely not you could put it out always keep a fire extinguisher but let's say you didn't, you could run yourself into a very bad problem. So be very, very careful. So I'm going to turn it on and we'll see if it does anything. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I saw the fuel go in there very, very immediately and there was no problem. So I'm not too concerned over that. I'm gonna let it run just a little bit longer just in case, but 
yeah, there's no issues there. So other than the sharpening of the blades and putting grease and uh, and other lubrication all throughout, um, that's really about all you have to do for the maintenance of the engine. Now, like I said, you could do other stuff, but it was just recently done. A uh, fuel filter, or excuse me, fuel pump, uh, valve uh, work could be done. Anyway, a valve work could be done. Uh, if you're having a hard time cranking, that's a dead giveaway that the, your valves are probably out of adjustment. Uh, valves, I would say you probably want to do every 50 or so hours. According to the clock on this machine, this machine is 80, and according to the receipt the other guy showed me, uh, it was already done. Uh, belts are also something you want to look at. Uh, these belts look fine, but look at all your belts. Some of them only have one, some will have two, some will have three. Uh, hydraulic fluid, if yours has hydraulic fluid, you will want to look at your manual, but in general, you're probably looking at your first uh, servicing probably anywhere between two to four hundred hours I know that's a pretty long stretch of time but uh, each manufacturer has their own time frame now like for instance like Toro they have a very long time frame it's like 400 hours but I know that some of these I've seen 200 hours uh, probably just depends on the quality of oil maybe the 200 just to be safe not sure but if you get a high quality oil you should be okay for a longer period of time so other than that air pressure in the tires well, we're going to check that and then uh, that you you know pretty standard but i guess we can go over it real quick so according to tire it should be at 22 psi if you don't have one of these digital meters it's actually quite useful and we are exactly 22 so there's nothing more to do there we're just good to go i really do like this because you can do both um, check the psi as well as um, fill it and it, when you're filling it it does kind of show you a weird number but when you stop the airflow it goes to the actual air pressure so it's not too bad at all other than that i'm going to be doing some blade sharpening and like i said just lubricate anything if you see absolutely any grease fittings put a little grease in there every time you change your oil excuse me it's an excellent time to do that um anything additional from that uh just look at your manual if you don't have one then just go off this list engine which we covered tires blades grease cleaning of any um, connections like uh, such as the battery uh, spraying the battery terminal checking the belts and that's really about it if you notice anything exceptionally wrong like a connection for a wire connection is really rusty or you see an exposed wire or anything like that those are signs that you need to do a little work on that piece so definitely do some but other than that this is a general tune-up on a zero turn uh, this one being a troy belt it's mainly a 24 horsepower briggs tune-up but um a lot of those other things like i said you just can't really show mainly because i don't even have that many grease ports on here and you just spray the silicone and everything else so it should be good to go okay catch you later subscribe and have a good night